Get started. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to our first interview of the Incredible Human. And I am Mabel Pan, and this is Mithru Zain, registered psychotherapist. And I'm so honored and so happy to have her to be on my first uh, guest as the series of the interview. Know that this interview is to show you that we are regular human beings that we went through our struggles to find the place we are in the world and the way we want to live and we're living it and all these possibilities are real same as the struggles also real and there's always ways to find yourself growing from those struggles and challenges and become who you are and who you want to be so Mithru, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you Hat, for having me, Mabel. And do you know that today is actually our first anniversary that we knew each other? That, that, <laughs> is, that is incredible. That is incredible. <laughs> the first message Mithru sent me was 2018, Whoa. June 7th. And we knew each other through a mutual friend. Yes, yes. You remember who that is? Do you know who you are? <laughs> Guess. <laughs> Anyhow, so... Um, can you tell me about something about yourself? Like, what do you do right now? So I'm a registered psychotherapist. And basically what I do is I work with the mind. I work with all states of consciousness, depression, anxiety, fear, stress, trauma, relationships. And my real, my real goal in my work is to help people to heal, to transform. That's amazing. What and is I, incredible work. I'm also an artist. I love dance. I love creating jewelry. I love painting and just giving a creative expression of the divine. Wow. Through love. Folks, I am so blessed to have her invite me into her space. All this beautiful paintings and so many more around me were painted by her. She's just so talented. And I, I would Thank love you. to learn how to do this later on from you. <laughs> no kidding. So out of all of these things that you're doing right now, tell me one thing that brings you the most fulfillment. The thing that brings me the most fulfillment um, that I had neglected for most of my life is coming into presence. Ah. Um, I recognize that too much of my energy was on doing too much was on trying to fulfill these ideas of how I'm supposed to be, but through making stillness a priority, mm. more than anything else, I've, I've begun to discover that it is through simply being that you can experience your holiness, because yes. just being connects you to your authentic self, and your authentic self is the expression of the divine moving through this vessel. So coming into a moments every day, you know, a few minutes here and there, maybe an hour in the morning to just experience the sense of presence. Uh, I am the I without the conditionings starts to push me into the state of feeling union with my greater self. And that union is the experience of this beautiful, orgasmic love, mm -hmm. beautiful, the full love. Yeah, I guess a lot of us are still struggling in a state where we try to fulfill all the duties we're supposed to be, and a lot of them are to please others, right? Yes. This responsibility we prescribe to ourselves, I actually just want approval from other people. And when we're, I'm not saying that we should not like help other people or fulfill others, but if in between the lines we lose ourselves, then, then that's the problem, right? And I think what we need to discover is when we are moving in the world and we're doing actions, but we notice that we get stressed, anxious, tired, fatigued, unhappy and depressed, then the actions we're, that we're doing are not coming from the truer place. It's coming mm -hmm. from uh, the mind or the ego or these conditioned sense of self. So I'm working on shifting out of that and moving into... Uh, really moving and acting from a whole different state of being and so now the acting the doing that I'm doing is more effortless mm, wow that's amazing it's more guided and it's more joyful and that's effortless is so um, so incredible because that doesn't mean that we don't do anything actually Mithru is doing um, is finishing her doctor <laughs> thesis like becoming yeah. a doctor uh, in psychology this Right, really amazing. Yeah, I'm finishing my doctoral thesis. I'm 
putting together a curriculum for a group therapy program in art and have full-time clients and having a jewelry business at the side doing art feeding myself I'm doing a lot but it's more the being than the doing happens so that means you're gonna teach us how to do all these beautiful pictures I would love one to. day yes <laughs> yes I would love to <laughs> So stay tuned for that, huh? okay? So um, with all these things that you're doing and you already have focus and you already find yourself in between, um, can you tell me how do you feel about yourself right now in general terms? So how I feel about myself is that even though I'm doing a lot, um, I've been kind of for a two months on a quiet period uh, because I've been going into a lot of stillness to recreate the partnership with my true self. So how I'm feeling right now is I'm feeling more grounded than I've ever been, more present in my being and feeling there is a transition, an opening happening. Because I've said I'm tired of trying to find that love is an outside-in process. Mm. I for maybe lifetimes I've been doing this process of trying to find my fulfillment from the outside. So really now committing to um, going within and letting my greater self show me, show me the way, show me the path, show me the perception, so show me my mind, show me what's blocking me. So it's a place right now that's full of a lot of... Um, a connection to my greater self mm. and it feels like I have less to say about how I feel because there's less thoughts about myself and it's more of a state of just being and allowing Wow so now when you when you talk about your struggle right looking for, uh, for love from the outside there would be a lot of like struggles and challenges is that the biggest one so, in the past or something else is also on the table so the one of the biggest struggles I think that I have been dealing with and I think most of humanity, especially the people that see me, is the idea that love is an outside-in process. And what that means is that we're trying to feel this love, this fulfillment, this nurturance, and yes, the outside has a role to play in it, but at some point in your evolution, um, you find that Seeking love from the outside is limited because it's impermanent mm. and because other people have the stuff that they're going through and the love they give That's to so you true. is not really about you, it's about how they're feeling. So having gone through a lot of pain, a lot of heartache, a lot of sadness and not even understanding why, but just that there was this, there was this emptiness in me, this inner child who felt uh, not loved, not good enough, even this adult self. So my evolution has really been that love is an inside-out process and, and meaning that um, that the source of love is in you and whatever you need to do to connect to that place is to um, discover that, that love is... And, then, and as I'm starting to do more and more of that, I'm finding that everything that comes across my way, everything that I see that comes in front of me is an expression of love because I'm able to stay in that state of love in myself and that I believe is called liberation because you can release all attachments, things that do not serve you, you, you detach and from that place of detachment you're unbounded, you're free and then you know what true love is, it's not something that attaches you, it's something that sets you free. Well, that's a remarkable realization but before you can get to that realization when you're struggling from getting love from outside and you still want to see yourself from the outside and think about you're not good enough. Yes. And by the way, what is enough? I really don't know. <laughs> There's really no end to the topic of what is enough when you achieve certain point and then it's still not enough for some people in some other people's belief over you. There will be always criticism yes. around us anyhow, right? What is enough? What is enough for them? What is enough for you? This is a huge topic that we really need to explore inside of us because if we're not content with who we are, how can we be content presenting that to other people? We don't really secure. Right? So from that point to where you find that stillness and peace and finding everything is love, 
um, what have you done? Like, what are the tools that help you get through this talk challenge? Talk about this point. Yes, because please this, go ahead. We have all the time. <laughs> this is the point that I try to emphasize to the world, and this is the point that many people run away from and continue their cycle of pain and suffering. I had to go to the pain, the deepest pain in myself. I had to feel the grief, I had to feel the not enough, I had to feel the pain, I had to feel the depression, I had to feel the anxiety, I had to feel the rejection. I had to feel it so deeply and surrender to it, open to it, that I discovered that there was the pain and then there was the me loving the pain, me nurturing the pain, me looking at the pain and holding it in my heart. So there was these two aspects of me and that one that could love me, love, love and nurture and heal myself, that is my true self. That was one way. I also had to have the right beliefs about emotions. Now, most most people in society don't have the right beliefs about mm -hmm. emotions. I, I truly believe that our pain and our suffering, there is a gold nugget inside our pain and our emotions. And you access the gold nugget in your suffering and your pain through going to the emotion and looking and listening to the to the voice of the pain and listening to what it says. So for example, my pain would say, if I'm feeling rejected or lonely, I go and I feel the pain so deeply in myself and I just bring awareness and presence to it. I learn to sit with it, love it. All of a sudden, my me giving attention to that sense of loneliness is starting to fill me up. I also hear my body telling me, why are you afraid to go out and connect? what's going on there and then I let, let my inner being speak to me tell me why the loneliness is loneliness why the sadness is sad why the depression is depression why the anxiety is anxiety and when I start to learn why and how and what that is the point of transformation that is the point of growth and evolution that's amazing you know coming out from a registered psychotherapist and also going to be a doctor in psychology. This is really powerful. You know, the first few years when I was teaching classes, telling people to feel their feelings, they keep questioning me. It's like, why am I, why do I want to feel my pain? Why do I want to feel my sadness? Why do I want to suffer from it? And, and I have to keep telling them, you know, through my own experience that we've been pushing away our feelings for so many years, and we've been taught to avoid our feelings from our parents, their parents, their, their doings. But look at all of us. Have we finished or have we stopped suffering from those feelings? No, we never have been. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Those old tools, old ideas of what feelings are supposed to be dealt with, it's not working, right? So right now, um, we're in a much more enlightened um, time that we start to embrace our own human self, our uh, all our feelings, and with a highly trained professional in that term, she still it's telling us that this is the biggest tool that you just feel your feelings and let it finish. This is really powerful. And it's not to judge your feelings. It's not to judge your, your feelings. Your feelings and your heaviness doesn't make you weak. And it's actually make you stronger. It makes you stronger. So I, as I literally let go of all the judgment towards my feelings, I was unable to respond to my needs while just taking a day off to just be here to go into the nature, I was able to respond to what they needed because I didn't judge them and fulfilling those needs allowed the healing. So Yeah, allowing it's uh, the most important term. When we allow, it can have a time to express itself. And after all, feelings are just being there, want to express itself, tell us something, right? Yeah, they say, you know, emotions are energies in motion so if we can feel them we can move them we can feel them we can move them that's amazing so when you look back to your transformation process right it's mm -hmm. been like quite a few years i i knew you for a year and i saw really remarkable changes in you yeah, past and, years. <laughs> past yeah. years like yes, what? myself too we grew together it's mm -hmm. amazing you, you don't know how much you inspire me like Thank all this you. pain that you went through um, each other with each other and then all this uh, awakening in between like especially after you finish um, a certain feeling you all of a sudden come with this really amazing idea I would be like whoa I need to jump this down I need to jump this down <laughs> just to say that I'm a highly sensitive person yeah so I feel very intuitive I feel globally I feel family I feel a lot so yeah so 
when you look back to that process, right, it's with the um, knowledge and awareness you have now, is there anything at all that you want to do it differently? I want to answer that question. I'm going to answer it a little differently. Um, there's nothing I could do differently because I had to go through the hard way to understand and learn the new ways. Like, how do you learn physics without learning, you know, addition or subtraction? Sure. But what I would do differently now if I approach those similar challenges. So let me think of an example. So then, uh, so I can uh, illustrate learning the shifts. Mm, I think what's coming through right now is how to uh, stay connected to my higher self when I'm going mm. through a challenging situation. And the wisdom that's coming, that's been coming up for me is non-attachment to people mm. or people that are close to you. And non-attachment doesn't mean you don't care. It just means that um, you know who you are and you can see that a lot of people around you are living in their own conditionings and beliefs and you feel like you don't need to take on those conditionings and on the, and take on those beliefs because you've started to discover and know who you are and that really understanding that letting go of the enmeshment that we have with other people the enmeshment meaning that you define your sense of self through either through looking at through under through, through trying to see how they're seeing you through their eyes so letting go of that um your identity being formed by their needs and expectations of you and really understanding that actually all of life is between you and source it's between mm. you and the creator and people are on their own journey so me trying to shift change make them happy it's not really about me and them now this might sound selfish but where this really no. where this really <laughs> where this really gets to is that having the courage to live the life that you need to live having the um, strength and fearlessness to um, pursue your greatest path because you're focused on not the other person but on you and your connection to source and what it wants for you, what it wants for you. And then when you interact with somebody and they have conflicting beliefs, expectations of you, um, you're not bothered by them not being pleased with you or approving of you anymore. You're not bothered by that. You let them be displeased with you. You let them have whatever feelings they want over you because, you know, at the end of the day, it's not really about you and them. So. Well, I, I guess nowadays, like, we have come into a much more common, open uh, perspective over uh, self-care is not selfish. Because we cannot give anything that we don't have. If you don't love yourself, how can you give love to others? It's, it has no ground, it has no base. And also by taking care of ourselves, we show other people that they can do the same. <clears throat> and, and I always believe as a parent, like I have four kids, right? Like the best parenting is always you do, they see, and they follow. But if you cannot do it yourself, how can they see it and how can they follow, right? There's no ground and it's just empty talk when we talk. And, and so it's amazing that you can, um, through all these years, using your skills and your bravery, because it's really very scary sometimes like, to face your biggest fear and you really face it to the end. It's like running a strong so marathon of fear. When I see something that I fear, I'm like, let's kill it. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna be a warrior and I'm going to go right into it and I'm going to work on it. And I'm going to get all the connection with my greater self that I have to help me through it. And then I surrender and I allow that. I don't run away from it. Because when I run away from it, I feel the suppression. I feel the oppression. I feel the restriction. I feel the pain. And I feel like I can't be my brighter light so have you ever had a point that you want to give up like this is too much this is too intense it's like no i don't want to do this i'd rather be my old self just like hiding under the blanket have you ever had a point that you you have that don't want to give up because of temptation 
when I want to give up, I reframe that feeling to I need a break mm. or I need to stop focusing on this because I have this faith because I see from a greater perspective that there's me acting, but then there's the cosmic intelligence in the universe in our soul and our spirit orchestrating everything for our own growth. So when I say give up, I was never in charge anyways. <laughs> <laughs> when I have the moment of inspiration, I think it's me, the ego, but it's actually, you know, in yogic philosophy, we call it the supreme goddess, the shakti, the, the divine feminine, or just the, the life force creation power that is moving everything, that is that is moving your thoughts. And it's, it's we're not separate from it. We are that. We are that energy. So when I say that I want to give up, I also know that the energy that can come forth comes from me surrendering and opening to that infinite energy of love and, and, and that's always and everywhere, it's always here. So the idea of giving up uh, has to be looked at in a different way. Mm -hmm. So why don't you just change, like take a little break and come around from that uh, idea of giving up and you can actually ride over it. Yeah, it's like giving up means you don't have the the courage or the belief in yourself and of mm -hmm. course I've had that feeling but then it's like when I feel like I can't do it I'm like what is it in me that believes that can I can't do it was it what is it in me that believes that uh, I won't be successful that is too much well maybe there's a part of me that that thinks that I'm limited or I don't have access to greater source well from my experience going to meditation connecting to my greater self gives me the infinite wisdom and love that I need in that moment to shift and get energy. Mm. So it's it's telling me that my focus is not, not on the right thing when I want to give up. So you actually turn that moment of frustration into another layer of observation. Yes. And actually release more. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's a, a saying that when you are so, when you are so wanted to give up, you're actually so close to the finish line. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I had that feeling when I was giving birth to my third son. It was like actually calling upon God. It's like, oh, this baby is not coming out. You yeah. rather you rather let me die or take him out right now. And then when oh, I when I put it out there, the next moment he came up. And I find <laughs> just that just push I, and then this one one little bit. I find that when we're faced with something that's so much greater than we think we can handle, the universe always brings some support or help. We're guided some special support help comes like call Mabel or somebody comes my way to support me you know it's like life is a constant cycle mm. of giving and receiving and you're always being taken care of even when you think you're not so so yeah this is very important willingness to uh, accept help allow yourself to uh, be assisted and guided uh, maybe celestial help spiritual help or human help, we have a lot of amazing people around us, like even just ask for help from someone that you can trust, it is already very healing. Mm -hmm. But being able to allow yourself to come to a point to realize that I need help, mm -hmm. this is always the turning point. This yeah. is what we always see in our clients and people we help, is when they're willing to let themselves be helped and assisted, and that's how they change and transform. When you are recognizing that you need help then that's the point where you want to make your unconscious conscious there's too many people in life that are not recognizing that they need help and all their struggles challenges beliefs and patterns remain unconscious and then they keep acting in these ways that hurt themselves and other people so i recognize how much i needed help and how i still do and i'm a help uh like just at it, <laughs> you know, yeah. because I want to make my unconscious conscious. And and it's very important that me through that you are willing to ask for help um, out of all the background and education and training you already have, and because of that you recognize that you actually need help. And it's uh, yes. it's the case of a lot of uh, highly regard professional spiritual leaders that sometimes we forget that we are still in our human body. We still have um, transformation that we need to learn through and we still have uh, challenges we haven't totally finished and we actually would need help. I can see um, in all these years of coaching that professionals actually need more help because <laughs> it's very hard for them to find a help that they can trust, right? So, um, yeah, and I mean, when I say help, Help from people, help from food, help from the earth. Mm. Help is a sort of a mental state 
where you are open to receive. Yes, yes, yes. The openness to receive. And I get a lot it. of help from dreams. Oh. I get a lot of guidance through dreams. Yeah, tell me more about it. So I've always been a very dream person. And my higher self, my inner self comes to dreams to give me potent messages. Uh, more recently, I had a dream about... Uh, I was working through some psychological belief block and uh, in my dream there was a radio show happening and then I picked up the mic and I said I have something to say. As I started to speak my inner self was speaking through me and it said that here's the message we are both form and formless. Uh, we first are formless and then we come into this form earth as form. So now understand yourself as form and as formless. Both. You are both. And then the guidance was Whenever you're going through a struggle in your life, um, ask the questions to that struggle that takes you to the nature of your formlessness. And so, for example, if you're going through a fight, you question, okay, well, what's this fight about? Why am I fighting? What are my beliefs about the fight? Well, if this person is not going to give up, what do I need from them? Oh, I need to be feeling secure. Well, if I need to feel secure by them, but they're not giving that to me, what does that say about the nature of relationships? Nature says that sometimes they can give, sometimes they can't give. So if I'm attached to that, what does that show me? That shows me that to be attached to create suffering. Well, what does that mean? Then that means that maybe this is a part of reality or part of life that's requiring me to find another way to feel safe and secure. Where would that be? That would be in myself. Where is it? Where is it in myself? It's in my nature of the formlessness. So it takes you back to the formlessness. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're going through a struggle, ask certain questions about the what, why, and how. But those questions should lead you back to the state of your formlessness. Formlessness meaning the state that you are energy, you are light, you are not the physical being only, but much more than that. And that will start to help you learn detachment and you'll start to feel light and free right away. So that was the guidance that came through. So that is what you want to tell people when they have struggle. Is there anything that you want to add to that? Like if mm -hmm. people have similar struggle through um, into the, the, the frustration point of want to give up or have t very intense emotions that they find it very hard to get through. What is what is okay. the suggestion you Here's want to give Here's probably them? the biggest thing that I've been working on more recently. And I think it's doing wonders for me and I want to share it with the world and with people. When we are mentally unstable and we just find that we're going through so many emotions, often it's because our root chakra is uh, blocked and not, chakra. and not connected and our sacral and our solar plexus, these are the other top yeah. three chakras, are okay. imbalanced. So what I would suggest to people is start by working with uh, your root chakra, which is taking time to be very still and affirmations or whatever it is to come back to recognizing that I am safe, I'm loved, and I'm here. As you start to work with your root chakra and start to feel this physical presence, I have the right to exist, I can exist, I can be healed, I can be here, and then you start to feel um, this physical body, you start to feel connected to the earth, and you start to have trust in life again because our root is blocked because of trauma, trauma that doesn't let us feel safe to be on this planet, on this earth as a physical form. We start to work with the root, you start to feel much more grounded and present and anchored in your body. Then you're able to move into your sacral, which is all the emotions of anxiety, depression, trauma. Um, and you go into the sacral, but then you have a strong enough vessel so that, so that it, it can hold firmly and then you can feel the feelings and the sacral is about movement and flow, then you start to let go of the rational mind and allow the instinct part of yourself, the part of yourself that has shunned, shamed, your sexuality, all of that, you start to allow the instincts to move you, you give it yourself two hours a day or whatever to begin to allow not the mind, not the rational, but the pure instinct self, the, the, the flow of feelings and emotions to express themselves, whether through art, dancing, creativity, movement, and you start, and then you start to allow for the healing to happen. And then when you start to have a solid form with good movement, which is your sacral, that turn, that, that, that uh, solid form and movement creates power. Power starts to express itself through the, sa the solar plexus chakra. From there, you're able to create action, succeed in projects, and know yourself independent from other people, and you start to manifest your individual will 
on this planet. So a lot of people are trying to um, do so much, create projects, create tasks, but then they have mental emotional breakdowns and they're all over the place because their root in the sacral is not worked with. Mm, but, so in the ground first. So if you can start to work on those two root and sacral, then you're going to feel a lot more stable and then the doing will happen automatically. It'll just happen in a healthier way. So I would recommend for people to focus less on doing what society tells you to go to work. I mean, you got to do that, but start to really focus on healing your root and your sacral. That's really good tip. And even with not just like regular people, I found that like with um, already working like full-time healers, a lot of time we're very into the higher chakras because we're channeling and helping other oh people getting inspiration. And then we forget about ourselves sometimes and we're not grounded and we're all over the place. Sometimes I went a little cosmic change in, in the air and then we feel dizziness and headache. If that sounds like you, it's time to reground your roots and look at your sacral and your solar plexus and, and line them up and ground them down so energy can come through easily through you. And I always believe that when there's any cosmic changes in the field, we should not suffer. Like we have practiced so much, so many tools around us. Why are we still suffering when the next planet retrograde or the solar flare is the three times more? Why are we still suffering? Aren't we prepared for that already? It's most of the time that we are so nice, we are so giving. And then we forgot about ourselves that we need daily housekeeping too. So like, like yeah, spirituality is not a one day thing that you got it today, you got it forever. It You need to keep practicing it. Just like yoga, you need to keep practicing it. Your breathing, you need to keep practicing it. Your, your, your diet, you need to keep practicing it. Yes. It's not one day that you can just forget about everything and think that it will just sustain. Like, like over time, it needs maintenance. Yeah. So this is something that is very good advice. Um, um, healers, um, healthcare professional, and regular people alike that we need to really ground ourselves so that yes. everything that we learn can integrate. I can't tell you how important that is. My heart, my other chakras are very open, but the challenge for me was from my solar plexus down to my root, and that's partially ancestral you know, trauma and conditions, conditioning ideas from society. So having worked through that, I'm feeling a world of a difference. So I'm a, I'm such an, I'm a strong enough anchor. You'll be a strong enough anchor to allow for your greater self to come through your form. If you can learn to ground and then you can learn to uh, feel safe in partnership with life, feel trusting life, feeling... Um, you know, your sense of support and then allowing for yourself to feel your feelings without the mind getting in the way, so. Mm. So, awesome. So we have talked about a lot of things on how to, you know, observe the darkness and feel the emotions and tools to ground and it's more focused on, you know, how do you deal with the dark side. Now, I often say to, yes, yeah, students, <laughs> uh, like we're not just here to feel sad to feel bad and we're also here to enjoy and to feel happy yes. and have um, a mission and a vision that keep us going so for you what is your vision for yourself so for a while i had my vision you know to have a therapy practice to make money hmm? to you know be known but none of those things were fulfilling for me. <laughs> so, You're getting it out there. <laughs> right now. <laughs> I, I had to get to the purpose that is truly fulfilling for me. And I think my purpose shifts after a few months or a year to go into deeper truth. Mm. So right now, um, what my purpose is, um, is to love myself. Love mm, and my purpose is to focus my energies on um, discovering that I am the love for myself. Mm. And as I'm moving into um, feeling and being present with this physical body and letting and just really coming to self awareness, um, there is this beautiful. Union, as I mentioned, that is felt, and it's 
with me and creator or me and my true self. And uh, also, it was also experience of the inner feminine masculine being more fully expressed. Mm. So my purpose is to find mm, really to stay or to reconnect to the place of, of love within myself and to let myself be guided by my own, my creator or my inner, or my higher self to be the vessel. So then that way it doesn't become my purpose per se, it, it becomes um, me recognizing my greater self. And when you have that experience, you understand yourself to be that infinite love, compassion, joy, power, possibility. And then you don't feel like you need anything because you're fulfilled. So then what you start to do comes from not trying to get something, but it comes from wanting to express the joy, the love, the fullness that you are. And then life becomes a celebration versus becoming work. So that is my purpose becoming purposeless to let myself simply be and to know my true nature and then to live in bliss <laughs> so. and just enjoy life as is yes yeah yes. that's cool so now most of us have um very good uh understanding of you which is amazing like i just want you to know that no matter how successful a person and how much they can they have work on themselves there's always still challenges and struggle and the tools that we learn is to help us get them through get help ask for help and help yourself this is self-love this is not selfish and um, and we know that you have a lot of tools you have a practice you're a registered psychotherapist and I know you have workshops coming up can you tell us more yeah. about like how people can find you what they can um, get help from you what kind of help they can get from? So firstly, uh, I do one-on-one -on -one psychotherapy sessions. So any challenges you're going through, uh, not, not medically, but could be medically, because there's always a psychological energetic link to that. Um, motion, stress, blocks, self-exploration, wanting to get to what I'm talking about. You've had trauma, rape, sexual issues, uh, self-esteem, self-worth, whatever. Uh, I help you through psychotherapy process where I integrate various modalities. Really the essence is about helping you to understand how your deeper beliefs are creating your experiences. Understanding where you have formulated these beliefs from your upbringing in your childhood or your life. And then helping you to understand how to have a, how to have connection with your emotions and your body so that you can listen to the inner wisdom. Uh, I'm also creating a curriculum and probably in July I'll be ready uh, it's going to be um, a four session group therapy program that is about expression through the arts. Each class we're working through a chakra. So first class we're working with the root and second class sacral, third class solar, fourth class the heart chakra and then the next four are the upper chakras. And in this uh, group therapy what you'll expect is there'll be a bit of mind body education about that chakra we're working with. Understanding the theme related to that chakra that we struggle with. Then we'll do a bit of uh, meditation and some self introspective questionings and then we'll move into the creative expression activity where we'll give uh, expression to that theme and that chakra through painting, watercolors, crayons, pastels, and also for some sessions jewelry making using gemstones. Oh. So this is about creative expression to heal the chakras, integrating meditation and wisdom about these particular themes that I've talked about today. So go to my website. Mm -hmm. It's a www me too, which is m i t u my name psychotherapy.ca and then you can go to uh, upcoming workshops and classes to sign up for the four session group therapy art program. Yeah, I will put her contact um, into the comment section later on so you will be able to find her um, and you can also click her name on the Facebook and you'll find a lot of information about me through. And she talked about the jury that rings a bell, like if you find her 
familiar in the faces, you probably have seen her in one of those uh, healthcare, wellness, or even like aesthetic dance event that she was um, showing malas and selling them. And she made them all in this all beautiful pieces. And yeah, that's her. <laughs> that's that's the the jewelry is an expression of an energy or frequency state that I tune into. Gemstones carry vibrations, mm. and each one has their moods to support with your joy or healing, you know, what, what you need as medicine, so. So that's good news, you're gonna teach us how to draw, um, express the her chakras, heal them, and also make jewelry. Yes, the painting, yeah. and creativity, and fun. Cool, so I'm looking forward to that. Thank and you. thank you very much today, Mitri, for your time and your trust <laughs> to thank put you. it out there. And um, it's actually, it's not easy. My interviews are quite deep. Like I get people to talk about their shortcoming and Lots. darkness. Yes. And how to heal them. <laughs> I'm all about talking about that. Nothing and to she's hide. just amazing. Just bring it out there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take and care. folks, stay tuned for the next one. I have more amazing, incredible human coming in the series of interview. And so look forward to those interviews in the next round. And also follow um, her Facebook, my Facebook. Uh, I have also a YouTube channel and um, Instagram that you can find useful tools to help you deal with uh, everyday things from physical to emotional to mental to spiritual and to help feel better in general. All right, stay tuned until the next one. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.